Every single animal around the world is adapted to a slightly different way of life, and their bodies have evolved to be able to move about in their environment efficiently, and to digest the foods that they eat. Some animals have much broader diets than others, whereas some animals will only eat one animal or one kind of plant. The animals that have more specialised diets are usually more vulnerable, as they are relying on other animals or plants to survive, and they are unable to adapt very easily. Even though we like to group animals based on what they eat, not all of them like to stick to the rules. Some animals that are known as peaceful plant eaters will often eat meat, and this seems to fascinate people around the globe. Strangely, for some reason, people like to use this as an argument to prove that all animals should eat meat, and that you shouldn't be veggie or vegan, but this argument is very flawed and honestly quite naive. Most carnivores will eat plants to get certain nutrients that they aren't getting from their regular meat diets, and this is the exact same reason why some herbivores eat meat as well as plants. Large herbivores will sometimes eat other animals when good quality plant food is scarce, and some herbivores will eat carrion as it's an easy source of nutrition when other food is not available. Cases such as this are generally quite rare in the wild, but there are some plant-eating animals that are known to eat meat more than others. In today's video, I'll be going through just a few of these animals, and we'll start off with one of the most dangerous land animals on this planet. Hippos are among the largest land animals alive today, but unlike most of the other giant African herbivores, they are known for being extremely aggressive and unpredictable. Famously, hippos kill more people than most of the predators in Africa, with an estimated death toll of around 500 people a year. Hippos tend to be more aggressive in the water, and if they don't kill you directly, they can kill you through drowning when they capsize your boat. Back in May of 2023, a hippo capsized a boat containing 23 people, and this resulted in a death toll of at least 7 with the rest of the victims still missing. You aren't much safer on land as they are much faster than they look, so these interesting creatures are best viewed from a distance. When hippos aren't murdering or generally causing mayhem, they are mostly peaceful plant eaters that spend most of their active hours feeding on grasses. During the day, they will usually stay in the water to keep cool and hydrated, but as the night begins, they will leave the water and start to feed. Because their diet almost exclusively consists of grasses, it's very hard for them to get some essential nutrients. This might be why they are sometimes known to feed on other animals, and they have been witnessed doing this a few times over the years. In most cases, they will feed on animals that have already died or animals that have been recently killed by predators, but in some rarer cases, they have attacked and killed animals to eat them. In the vast majority of cases, they will eat other herbivores such as wildebeest, zebras, and antelope, but in some more disturbing incidents, they have been witnessed eating their own kind. Of course, it's not very easy for them to eat meat as their teeth and jaws haven't evolved to do this, and they have difficulty biting off chunks of meat. Their tusks come in very handy when it comes to fighting other hippos for food and space, but they lack the sharp teeth that are needed to slice off flesh. This behaviour has led to some people claiming that they are omnivores and not herbivores, but this statement is incorrect as this behaviour is still very rare. Using this flawed logic, we should also class big cats as omnivores, as they are sometimes known to eat grasses and melons. So even though the hippo eats meat, the vast majority of its diet consists of grasses, but this doesn't make them any less scary. There are nearly 50 species of deer alive today, and these animals are known for being extremely peaceful and skittish. They seem to have conquered almost all terrains and ecosystems, being found in all sorts of habitats from harsh frigid forests to dense lowland jungles. Of course, some deer are braver and more powerful than others, with the moose being the largest and most dangerous deer on this planet. These giants can measure up to 2.1 meters at the shoulder, and they have been known to claim the lives of humans in the past. In most cases, deer will choose to flee in the face of danger, but during ruts they become more aggressive and they are more likely to fight back. The diet of a deer varies greatly from species to species, but they primarily feed on plant matter with grasses, berries, and leaves making up the majority of their diet. Surprisingly, deer will sometimes supplement this plant-based diet with meat, and some species seem to eat meat more than others. On the Isle of Rum in Scotland, there is a small population of red deer numbering around 1,000 individuals, and these animals have been studied extensively by scientists. 
The deer on the island have been giving birth earlier in the year in a response to global warming, and they have also started to feed on seabirds on a regular basis. There is a large number of nesting seabirds on the island, and it's theorised that the deer are feeding on the seabirds as some nutrients are very hard to obtain on the small Scottish island. It seems as though the deer are adapting to global warming and the lack of high quality plant food, but birds aren't the only animals that deer will eat. They have been known to feed on rabbits, bones, and in some very rare cases, human remains. But they very rarely actively hunt other animals. Deer that are found in areas with an abundance of rich plant matter are far less likely to eat meat, and thankfully they don't see humans as a direct food source. Giant pandas are one of the most fascinating creatures alive today, and they really don't seem to make much sense at all. They were once carnivores but they have evolved to eat bamboo which is naturally poor in nutrients, and they really don't seem to be that interested in breeding in captivity. Even when they do want to mate, females are only fertile for a few days a year, and this may be part of the reason why they are currently listed as vulnerable. In the wild, they often communicate with one another through scent, and this is why you can sometimes see them handstanding while peeing. There is one subspecies of giant panda which is brown and white instead of the iconic black and white, but there are only an estimated 200 to 300 of these unique pandas alive today. Fully grown pandas can fight off some predators, but the young and the females are sometimes targeted by Asian black bears, leopards and snow leopards. Even though 99% of a giant panda's diet consists of bamboo, they still have the digestive system of a carnivore. This means that they can't process the bamboo very well at all, and this might be why they sometimes target other animals. In the wild, they will sometimes feed on small animals and bird eggs, and they have even been observed feeding on carrion. They will feed on these animals to get an extra bit of protein, but I think it's fair to say that they aren't the most impressive predators in the world. They have evolved certain adaptations that help them to feed on large amounts of bamboo all day, such as false thumbs that help them to grip the plant. This fibre-rich diet also means that they have to poop around 40 times a day, and when they aren't pooping they spend around 10 to 16 hours a day feeding. So even though the modern day giant panda is very much herbivorous, it does sometimes like to live like its ancestors and hunt for meat in the bamboo forests. When you think of a ruthless predator, squirrels don't usually come to mind, but some of these creatures have garnered a pretty vicious reputation. Squirrels are usually pretty far down the food chain, as they fall prey to pretty much all the medium to large sized predators in their ecosystem. There are more than 200 different species of squirrel alive today, and each one of these species are adapted to a slightly different way of life. Some of the largest squirrels can be found in South and Southeast Asia, and these strange arboreal creatures can weigh up to 3 kilograms. These giants are perfectly capable of hunting smaller animals, but there's another type of squirrel that's been shocking people with its hunting prowess. Squirrels are usually split into a few different groups, including flying squirrels, tree squirrels, and ground squirrels. Some of the squirrels in these groups are in fact omnivorous as they feed on insects, bird eggs and amphibians, but the vast majority of their diets are made up of plant matter. The one group of squirrels that are known to be more omnivorous than the rest are the ground squirrels, and there are a few species that really stand out. Prairie dogs will sometimes kill ground squirrels, but these killings aren't usually predatory. The prairie dog competes with other ground squirrels for space and food, so most of the time these deaths are a result of fighting over resources. One particularly bloodthirsty prairie dog called Killer Supreme killed nine ground squirrels over a four year period, and strangely this behaviour isn't rare at all. The prairie dog is a surprisingly good killer, but it's still outdone by another smaller ground squirrel. The California ground squirrel is a lot smaller than the prairie dog, with a maximum weight of around 800 grams. The majority of this mammal's diet is seed based, but they will also feed on insects from time to time. For many years it was believed that they were not too different to other similarly sized squirrels, but recent evidence has uncovered that they are mammal hunters. California ground squirrels have been observed hunting and eating local voles, and this behaviour is becoming more and more common. The squirrels don't appear to be hunting the voles year round, and instead it seems to fluctuate with the number of voles in the area and the availability of seeds. 
When the vole's numbers are high and the seeds are harder to find, they will turn to a meteor diet. And this kind of behaviour may become more frequent in the future. At first, it may seem strange to see a squirrel hunting in this way, but there are other smaller mammals that also have a taste for blood. This entry is slightly different to the others in this video as squirrels are mostly omnivorous, but their vole hunting behaviour is still quite a shock to some people. For this reason, they have a place on this list, and I think it's fair to say that they are among the deadliest squirrels in the world. Of course, there are many other animals that could have made it into this video, so if you think you know of any, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.